Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And we are a teaching center that focuses on hands-on courses to improve your skills and knowledge in general dentistry. Today we're going to discuss the MO pin onlay on tooth number 13. You know, when pins and auxiliary retention features can be very beneficial because they can improve resistance form and retention without removing large amounts of tooth structure, like we've shown in these two cases. And in this case, we can even use pins at the gingival to help maintain a crack in a large restoration. You can see the before and after how we can, we're able to save a lot of enamel with this particular option. So let's get started. Today we're going to work on tooth number 13. And it's a large MO blockout. It doesn't have much availability for us to make a dovetail because so much tooth structure has been removed in the center area, in the isthmus area. And then on the mesial lingual, a significant portion of the mesial lingual of that lingual cusp is undermined. So our extension is going to have to extend out along this line like this which will probably put us in a situation where we have to reduce a cusp. So here's a 330 burr. We're going to use this to make our initial slit as we do in all of these techniques, 1.5 millimeters or so. We'd like to try to keep the 330 burr away from the walls because of its obvious uh, shape, which would cause an undercut. And we don't want to have to deal with undercuts. We want to start out with a nice uh, straight wall uh, that we can taper. And here we're using the 55 or 56 burr uh, to start the inlay preparation. And you can see that we're just using a brush stroke and moving it along, trying not to make the pulp of wall any deeper, but also making sure that none of the block out is going to be left at the cable surface margin. And we just work the burr around the distal wall there, making sure it's tapered properly. And we're just changing the angle here to show you the preparation on the lingual side. And part of the occlusal outline would be to generate the exit angles or the flares in this particular case. We'd like to get the flares started first and then follow those flares when we drop our box. Here's the 169L ready to drop the box. And we are going to start with a very narrow preparation in this area and then widen it gradually until we meet the existing occlusal walls that we've created in the initial step. We probably want to go about 1.2 to maybe 1.4 millimeters deep at the gingival. In other words, their axial depth at the gingival because we are going to be placing some retention features in the gingival wall of this preparation. At this point, it's moving along just fine. Uh, the problem is we still have that lingual undermined area. So this is something that you can't always anticipate, but when you encounter block out that remains on the lingual wall because of uh, an undermined area, or you just go ahead and keep extending the wall until you've moved past the block out material. And that necessarily is going to cause this wall to flare significantly. You can see the little bit of block out that's still left uh, in that area. So uh, when you do this, you lose a lot of resistance form because you no longer have that lingual wall to keep this from rotating. So that leaves us with a little bit of a resist resistance form challenge and we're going to have to come up with a method to overcome that challenge. You 
you know, we try to use the burr as much as possible. There's been no hand instrumentation on this preparation at this point. This has all been done with the burr. I want to thank my mentor, Dr. Warren Johnson, who really taught me to use the burr to define your preparation and then use the hand instruments to refine. Notice how the lingual cusp tip is encroached upon by that lingual extension. And that's not a really good idea to leave a margin up in that area where there's going to be a lot of function. So we have to make the call to onlay this. Uh, but how do you onlay an MO inlay without creating a distal box? Well, we kind of showed you that in the second uh, video in this series, but I'm going to show you here again. So you can see that we start the preparation a little bit away from the marginal ridge and then go ahead and create this A-plane, this functional cusp bevel first and establish the outline form on the lingual. And then we're going to turn the instrument around and face towards the facial with the tip of the burr and mimic the inclination of the adjacent premolar and then perform the B plane. You want to keep an idea of uh, how much you are prepping. We'd like to have 1.5 millimeters of gold on top of this. So you have to just uh, either use depth cuts or the thickness of the burr to estimate that. And then of course, once the rubber dam's off, we can go back and uh, verify the reduction with uh, interproximal, or excuse me, with interocclusal records that we can measure before we're ready to take the impression. Turning the angle here a little bit so you can see this little feature, which we call the channel. And you always need to have a, an area of bulk when you transition between an inlay and an onlay, whether it's ceramic or gold, because you don't want to have that area too thin where you make this immediate transition from an inlay to an onlay. So like the countersink we performed on tooth number 15, we're going to place additional uh, retention features here and resistance features. So this is going to start with a little countersink. You could use a four round or even a two round. I'm going to go back and redress these countersinks uh, after the pinholes have been placed. But we would just want to use this to, to get an idea of where to place it. Always in Denton uh, and uh, never near the pulp. And then now we have a triangle of resistance form. We have the pinhole on the occlusal, the pinhole on the gingival, and then we have the wall on the facial. So we've completed our hand instrumentation except for the internal bevel of this uh, particular uh, case and this internal acuteness is something that I haven't shown you yet and I think it's going to be uh, important for you to see how we do this. I'm just going over that gingival bevel a little bit with the gingival margin trim. So here's the internal acuteness that we were talking about with the 232 true bow gingival margin trimmer and we make a, about a 30 degree internal slope to the gingival wall. And what this is going to do is going to help increase the resistance form. It's also going to be an aid in seating this inlay uh, and driving it into the uh, tooth properly. Between the pins and this internal acuteness, I don't think this inlay is ever coming out. Here's the uh, 169L, which is going to be used to deepen these little pilot holes or these countersinks. And we want to line up the burr with the long axis of the preparation and then go ahead and start prepping down. I like to go about 1.5 millimeters on the uh, occlusal and we'll go a, a little bit less on the gingival for a couple of reasons. Number one, we don't need a really long pinhole here. We're just trying to replicate a wall anti-rotational effect. And the other reason is we don't want to punch through uh, on the cervical area. So there are the, uh, the pinholes that have been placed. So now let's go ahead and countersink these a little bit so that they have a little bit more bulk uh, adjacent to the pulpal wall or gingival wall. And that will keep the pins from bending when you go to uh, seat these. 
So usually slow speed is, is the way I would do these, or electric, probably about 1,000 RPMs, you know, really, really slow. And then we're now going to do the countersink on the occlusal pin, or the pulpal wall pin. And there's our four round. Probably about half the distance of the burr would be about right. So let's measure, oh, there we are, 1.5, and over here we're probably about 0.75, maybe a millimeter. So once again, we have significant resistance and retention form on that occlusal pin, and then just enough resistance to keep this from rotating due to the lack of an excellent wall on the lingual. And you can see the little channel as you go from the inlay to the onlay that then blends into the A-plane or the functional cusp bevel. And all of these bevels should be uh, continuous around the preparation. So that's about it. And the next video will be made looking at this MOD, and I'm going to do something really different that is going to kind of push the envelope in what is possible with inlay preparation design. I think it'll be kind of cool to see. So uh, we have a cast gold and gold foil course that we run every December, and we'd love to have you there. The course will fill up pretty quick, so I'd suggest you jump on it if you're interested. And you know, it's always a pleasure to, to spend a few minutes with uh, you all out there trying to be do better dentistry, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.